Hey everyone, welcome back to How To Be A Poser. Today, Rohan calls for aid, and the Dunedain will answer with the Aragorn Battle at Helm's Deep six scale figure by Asmus, exclusive edition. Let's get started. All right, here it is, the Aragorn Battle of Helm's Deep six scale figure by Asmus, still in its box, exactly the way it's gonna come to you. This is the exclusive version of the figure, so it comes with this magnificent environmental base, an interchangeable portrait, lots of cool hands, Aragorn signature weapons. Can't wait to see what I can do with all this cool stuff, so let's get rolling. All right, here it is, Aragorn out of his box, ready to go. Um, this guy's a fighter, and he's a hack and slash type of fighter, and I think that this first pose that I do is going to reflect that. One of his signature moves is to have both hands on his broadsword, two-handed sword, bastard sword, whatever, bringing it back, bringing that elbow up, uh, just getting ready to swing, hack at his opponents. Uh, so we're going to do that, which is going to require, obviously, both sword hands. Uh, so let's go ahead and get these fists that come attached to the figure out of the way. Let's see, that's one sword hand, there's the other. Um, let's see, the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put the hands onto the figure. Probably should have done the belt first, but it's, you know, neither here. I'm going to go ahead and get that on all the way. I just want to make sure that that's, yeah, that's on there good and tight. Okay, good. And sometimes when you're putting hands onto a wrist peg, you can get a false connection, so to speak, where you think you've uh, put the peg all the way into the hand, but it's actually just very loosely in the hand. So it kind of hangs there, like in this case there, that would be a perfect example. Gravity is not having an effect on it, but you can see that it wiggles this way, which it shouldn't do, considering the point of articulation is moving the other direction. So just apply enough force to get that all the way on there so that it's nice and snug, and you're ready to go. Now I'm gonna move these elbows, these arms up, because the next step will be to put this sword belt onto him. The first thing you do is wrap it around so that his scabbard hangs on his left side and the, the sheath for the elven dagger uh, hangs on the right. Make sure that that scabbard's on the outside of the belt. Grab the tip of the belt, feed it through the loop, the buckle rather, and pull it tight. Just be really gentle because you don't want to do any, don't want to damage any of your plastic bits. Remember, be good to your plastic. Yeah, I want that belt, that buckle, to be left of center here. The reason why will become obvious next. Let's see how long this is. It's the highest of fashions to uh, bring your belt up through here and then drop it back down, tying it in a bit of a knot. Let's go ahead and pull that over so that it pulls snug. It's right there and there. And I think for my purposes, I'm just trying to avoid, I didn't want to have it dangling right in front. I just kind of want it off to the side a little bit, off to his right. Just gonna... Now keep messing with the costume as you work with the figure, just to make sure that all the elements play appropriately, because you want to make sure that, um, that it looks like gravity is having the actual realistic looking effect on all the different bits of fabric. Uh, you can notice, you, you notice that over here, I've already gone the extra mile and pulled these pants down to create wrinkles there at the boot. This is how it looked when it came, and this is how it looks now. And you can see that the folds that I created here read as much more realistic. The way that I do that is I take these pants and I just pull them up, the pant leg, a little bit out of the boot, and down from the top, and then just kind of gradually create folds at the top of the boot. If you've ever worn boots that get tucked in, uh, that, where the pants get tucked into them, this is what happens over time as you wear them. Uh, they just form folds down there. It really kind of, it's a nice little touch that enhances the overall look of whatever pose that you eventually hit and just makes it look less like an action figure or doll uh, sitting on a shelf and more like the actual character, which is really, I think, what we're all about in this hobby. Now, with that done, I think it's time to start moving along. First, I wanna keep dressing the figure by putting the elvish dagger into its sheath. As I recall, he wears slightly behind his back it looks really, really cool when you think about it. And then it just comes around right there. He can reach back, just kind of like grab it and pull it out uh, when he needs it, which he does to great effect. Um, another note, to, another thing to mention is that with these van braces, you'll notice that they have a tendency to drift. Always make sure the Tree of Gondor goes over the top of his hand. Uh, that's just a good guiding post right there. Something else I'm just gonna go ahead and do, you'll notice that it comes with two heads, one where he's just kind of given a side eye, 
which is kind of a really famous airborne expression, and we're gonna use that in this pose. There's another head that, has, that features this more straight on expression. I'll use that in a different pose, but first and foremost, I'm gonna go ahead and get that, uh, get the uh, Evanstar pendant of Arwen onto him. Looking at this really closely here, it looks like there is one side that is more detailed than the other, so we're gonna try to let that fall in such a way that, it, that that's the side that, uh, that gets highlighted. We're gonna tuck that into his shirt as much as we can, because he doesn't he doesn't like wear that on display. I uh, don't have any tweezers on me. If you have tweezers, that's probably best, but I'm just gonna use a sword tip to just kind of drag that down, and you can just see it ever so slightly peeking out of his shirt. All right, so that's good. Let's go ahead and get the sword in his hand. Aragorn is right-handed, so we're gonna have his right hand gripping the top part of the sword just below the uh, cross guard. Cross guard, not to be confused with the crossing guard. All right, that wasn't funny. All right, so that's in there good and tight. Now, he has a very unique way of um, that he approaches his enemies uh, in prep. I've seen him actually hold the sword in front of his face once, I think, uh, maybe twice. Uh, but uh, my preferred look is to have it off to the side. So what he does is we'll go rotate that arm back and then bring it around because this is kind of how that arm is going to be. We want it up, and you can see that this is wiggling. That is the direction that I have that wrist peg going. I don't want it that direction, I want it this direction. Yeah. And get the other sword hand up, arm rather up, and then bring it over as far as you can. Rotate that around to where you know it's going to be. Now you can make minor adjustments to both arms. Important safety tip, don't really, f this is a ball and socket joint underneath these, underneath this costume. So don't really try to force it too far this way because what you'll wind up doing is popping that ball and socket out. If that does happen while you're posing the figure, don't panic, it's actually built to do that. There are two ways that you can fix it if this does happen for you. One is you can just by touch go in there and just kind of squeeze until you find the ball joint and then push it back into the shoulder and it'll snap into place. I just did that here with the one that I have here in, this, in the studio and it works just fine again. Uh, the other thing you can do is just go ahead and take the entire costume off. I don't recommend that. It's, um, it's kind of, it, it takes a long time to do. If you have to do it that way, then great. But um, if you don't, then obviously don't. All right, let's go ahead and get this other hand onto the pommel of the sword. And again, as, we've, as I've talked about in the past, you always want uh, that sword blade to be even with the level with the second knuckle on the hands, that's these right here. So just go ahead and getting that down to where it needs to be. I'm just gonna pull that over here, push this here, just kind of tweak it until it's where I want it to be. And great, that's a good start for that. So I also kind of wanted to have it back. I don't want the blade to be going forward. I want it to be back because he's gonna be getting ready to swing it. Let's turn his head. We want him looking this way. And on top of that, we want to get a good stance, but we'll work on that later. Somebody actually commented once about how you should start with a firm stance um, and then build your way up. But the person who was doing that, he works in stop motion. And I think when you're working with a stop motion model, that's a completely different ball game and you would want to start with a stable base. Um, but for six scale posing, that's not necessarily the case. I usually start from the top and work my way down and that's worked out pretty well for me so far. Uh, Aragorn stepping forward with his right foot. And let's go ahead and bend that a little bit at the, at the ankle. We're gonna move this foot back, and then I wanna rotate him, again, we're rotating him around by a while. I also wanna lean forward here, and let's get that head up, and jutting that neck forward as much as we can, because he does that, man. He moves like he's a panther, like he's getting ready to pounce. He's, he's eyeballing his prey, and he's, he's ready to attack. All right, so I'm just gonna slightly move those legs apart just a little bit, just to create a little bit more of a desirable aesthetic effect. And let's get those arms up because he's always doing that. Look at that, that looks so much better when you do that. And when you do it high enough, then you can see as I rotate this around that the sword is kind of angled a little bit back. You don't want that thing to be straight up and down. It just doesn't look very, very pleasing when you do. Um, to that end, I'm also gonna move this arm, straighten this arm just a little bit. And what that does is that also takes this sword blade, it was originally straight up and down, but now as you can see, it's just tilting a little bit that way. 
and that's much more desirable as well. Now, if you want to, because we have here with us today the deluxe version, then you can bring this magnificent beast of a stand in and give him a place to live. So we're gonna bring this decorative element in and slide that in. That's a different stand uh, specifically for this base. Um, I think this figure is stable enough that it can actually stand on its own, but it is an expensive figure and I would rather just be on, play, it, play it safe. Slide that in, good luck. Let's move that up. Get that underneath his groin, get his feet back. There we go. Yeah, had to make some small adjustments to that just to make it work. Uh, we can also add the torch as another decorative element to that base. And once you've got that in, then you're set to go. Let's just see how that looks. Boom, Aragorn at Helm's Deep. This figure features the future king of Gondor at the second stage of his journey in Lord of the Rings. Thought by his friends and all of Rohan to have been killed during the battle with Saruman's war riders, he returns to them alive, a resurrected savior with a warning of an approaching enemy, and announces publicly his intent to fight and die as one with the Rohirrim. It's the stuff legends are made of, and you should keep that in mind while you're posing this figure. Did you enjoy that video? Be sure to subscribe by hitting the S icon on your screen and click the bell icon to be notified whenever a new video is posted. If you'd like more info on the items featured in this video, click the link provided under product info. Thanks for watching and don't forget to let your geek side show.